Lord, it's amazing to be here with my people, my cannabis smoking people. You have no idea how long I've been waiting my life to be able to, to do things like this and spend time talking uh, about these types of topics with people who I really love. I love to be around. I got a joint right here if you want to smoke that. <laughs> um, so who here has ever smoked a joint, right? Can I get hands? All right, all right. All right, you smoked a joint. You know the feeling when you smoke that cannabis, right? It's amazing, right? It's what all kind of brought most of us here, except for the non-smokers, we forgive you. Um, but first you have to go find it, right? You gotta get that cannabis. And that's what happened to me, right? That's kind of what my journey here was, right? About kind of about finding, right? Finding that cannabis, finding that passion. And back in the day, I was on the East Coast, Florida, Georgia, places where finding your cannabis wasn't very easy. Lots of barriers there, lots of troubles, lots of trials, lots of tribulations that I experienced, along with a lot of my peers. When I went to go find cannabis, a lot of times there was fear, and I think a lot of us here have kind of gotten not as used to that as we have been, right, especially on the East Coast. You had to dodge the police sometimes. You had to go find the, you know, the best cannabis. It's not just finding cannabis. We all know that there's a difference between just cannabis and, right, as my boy said earlier, the good good, right? There's a big difference between that. So you had to go from block to block. You had to try out this dime sack, and sometimes they'd even let you take it back. You'd have to, you know, sometimes get pulled over by the police and sometimes go to jail. And I myself went to prison, or went to jail, excuse me, uh, three times, three times for cannabis possession. That cost me a lot. I lost a scholarship as a result of that. I lost what I thought was the most amazing engineering position at General Electric because they took a hair test. And this time I had a little more hair than I do now. Um, but I told them at the time, I'm a male model, so um, I shaved all of my hair. So I'm sorry, uh, HR rep, I don't have any hair. I'm trying to buy myself time, right? All these trials and tribulations, they ended up taking that test later. They gave me an extra month, but they ended up, you know, um, they ended up uh, denying me because I failed that hair test. And I'm sitting in my room and I'm dealing with all these trials and tribulations, but I knew that cannabis was there, right? And I knew something was there that was really important about this and I wanted to keep trying and I wanted to keep experiencing it. Something there was helping me, right? So I knew that once you get that cannabis, and you get that joint or the blunt as we used to use, and you smoked it, you took that first puff, and it was just kind of amazing for your senses, right? It really helped, you know, in so many different ways, right? It was at the same time, you didn't even understand it, it was balancing your endocannabinoid system, doing things inside your body that you didn't even know needed to be done. It started affecting the way that you treated other people. It started affecting the way that you treated yourself. It started affecting the way that you treat your family. And I have a two week old baby at home and I guarantee you I'm a lot better of a father after I smoke that joint and hear that crying than I, than I am before. <laughs> seriously, seriously. I think the best word for it is all encompassing. Right, it's all encompassing. It's helping you in so many different ways. As they said on half baked, right? Everything's better when you smoke weed, right? And that is true in a lot of different ways. The only time that I felt something like that, that was so all encompassing and affecting me in so many different ways, and those around me, even more so, I would say, was finding my passion, right? Finding my passion and then smoking it, <laughs> right? Just to get, bear with me for a minute, right? So finding that passion, right? I, I went through a lot of things there, right? In order to find that passion. I ended up, um, you know, traveling all these different cities, right? Spent a lot of time in Europe as an engineer. I thought that my passion was what the rest of the world told me my passion should be, success, right? And that's what a lot of us feel that it is. But something just wasn't right. Waking up, going to work every day just didn't feel right. Um, you know, listening to this boss, you're talking about things that I didn't care about just felt wrong in a lot of ways, and all of us talked kind of power through that, because success should be your passion. But it just, it just didn't sit with me right, it didn't sit with me, so I traveled around, and I realized that the more success I got, the more praise, the more applause I got, the more happiness I lost. And it just kept going down and down, and I said, wait, this has to be something, this is different. 
So when I was in Munich, Germany, I sat in that office at what I thought was the highest level of corporate success. And I said, when I get back to the US, I'm gonna find a way to find my passion. And I'll tell you something, that if you guys haven't read this book, this is around the same time that it caught me, The Alchemist, right? Who, who here has read The Alchemist? Amazing, right? That's what I, it, it touched me in a different way because I, I believed, I had faith that if I moved in the right direction, the universe would conspire in my favor. And it did. I was a cannabis consumer, and the first thing I thought when I went to Germany was I get to go to Amsterdam every weekend, all right? And I went to Amsterdam almost every weekend. Um, and I would come back with a little bit of hash, right? Still risking, right? Still risking a lot of different things for that cannabis, right? And when I finally got back to the U.S., they offered me a position in Portland, Oregon. And I was like, okay, I'm Oregon? I don't know anything about Oregon. I mean, Portland, I've heard of the Blazers, you know? But I know nothing about Oregon. I got to Oregon, right? It was amazing, right? What I consider, right, I, I think the cannabis industry I found after I grabbed that clone and that light and I put them in my garage and I was spending more time in that room trying to diagnose CalMag, you know, issues, right? Now you gotta know like CalMag is the solution for everything, right? Um, so trying to diagnose that and looking at this plant and understanding what this bug was and I realized that I spent more time in that grow room than I was making customer meetings, right? And I started becoming horrible in my job, so I quit because I was scared someone was gonna find out how bad I was. Not necessarily because I love cannabis that much to take that risk, but that helped me. And then when I got into the industry, I think that's when I found my passion, right? My passion of the cannabis industry, of, of, of helping people, of being able to look at these amazing plants as they grow and being able to consume them and then feeling that feeling with my senses, right? And how it helped me and how it affected everything inside of me. So that was my passion, the cannabis industry. And I think Oregon, I think Portland was my joint, you know? Like, when I got here, it just, it just all fit together. And I think even, even more so, I give Portland a little credit. It was my joint, it was a little, you know, the uh, concentrate that you put on top, it was a little bit of rosin, you know what I mean, fresh press, it was everything, that joint was amazing. So I found myself smoking my passion, right? And I say smoking my passion, it was all encompassing. It started to not only just affect everything in me, but how I could help other people. So I started the MCBA along with a number of other people to help more people who dealt with the issues that I dealt with, of that criminal justice system and cannabis and how so many can get lost. And trust me, I had to fight my way out of it. It was the alchemist principle that helped me to get out of that, you know, that, that ban. And when I realized that, right, I'm smoking this joint and it's starting to encompass everything about me, I'm helping more people. I'm happier, I'm loving what I do. I'm happy even when it's raining every day, right? I'm, I'm okay, I'm, 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 I'm within my purpose. And I would even argue that when you smoke your passion, it's even more encompassing than even cannabis can be. If you imagine that endocannabinoid system, right, and all these different receptors, right, it's the largest system of receptors in your body, and how cannabis helps to balance all these receptors, helps them to work all in unison. I feel like finding your passion and smoking that passion kind of does the same exact thing, except on a bigger scale because the receptors are the people. The organs are the communities. And when you smoke your passion, it can affect so much more than just yourself and what you believe is your perceived success. But you'll start to really realize that success is not just about yourself, but about what you can do for the receptors in the world. Thank you very much.